Hello readers, I'm Amy. First off, really, really sorry if you hear that rhythmic thumping in the background. That is our water sprinkler that my husband turns on every single day, and I keep thinking maybe I should film later, but I don't have time later, so I have to film with the thumping. Anyways, you're not here to hear about my sprinkler. If you clicked on this video, you know what we're here to talk about. This is day two of this book being released. It was just released yesterday as of this filming and probably as of this posting as well. And I finished it already. I finished all like 339 pages and I loved it. I did a ranking video a little while back, I'll put it up in the corner, that was ranking all the Grady Hendrix books that I'd read. And I would probably put this about on par with the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I think My Best Friend's Exorcism is still my favorite. However, I've loved almost all of his stuff except We Sold Our Souls, which I do want to give that another try. And this actually has inspired me, I think, if, if I can, depending on my school schedule and stuff, I actually think it would be really fun to do like a Hendrix Halloween thing where I reread all of Hendrix's books in October. So maybe I'll do that. And if you want to join in with me, then please comment down below because I think that would be really fun. But anyways, the final girl support group. This was just released. This is about Lynette Tarkington. She is one of six final girls, I guess technically seven, but six final girls who are in this support group. They've been in this support group for 15 years. And I think what threw me off a little bit initially is that th this is pretty much gonna be, th this is gonna be a no spoilers review. But on page one, we have this transcript from a subreddit on the final girls. And someone's talking about how no one cares about grandmas with saggy necks. So when I got into the first chapter of this, I was thinking like, oh, how old are these people? Like I was thinking, are they in their 60s? Are we looking at a support group of final girls who've made it to their 60s and then are in the battle to be the final final girl? But no, they're not that old. They're like in their 40s, which I guess whenever you're in your late teens, early 20s, you think that person is really old. They're not. I'm 27 and I'm feeling old, which is ridiculous. So you have this support group full of final girls and there's a lot of discussion of movie horror tropes in this. I didn't get all of it because I haven't watched a ton of horror movies myself. Um, I've started to dive more into horror movies. I found I am a creature feature and 90s film type of person, but I have watched all of the Scream movies and I love most of them. And I loved to hear that a character had a collection of all of the Stab movies because that is a Scream reference and I really appreciated that. But anyways, we have, we have a discussion of the different character tropes in horror. So there's the slut, there's the jock, there's the nerd, all of that. And in this one we have Heather, who's the drug addict. Lynette is the survivalist, also kind of a, her therapist calls her a voluntary agoraphobic. There's Danny, she's kind of the, the tough girl. From what I can understand, Marilyn is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre person. I have not watched those movies. I've been told that I would not like them. And Julia is the scream girl. She is the nerd of the group. Her um, final girl situation dealt with the ghost and it kind of describes the whole scream outfit. So in this book, things start to happen. And as we follow Lynette, who is our main character, she starts to wonder, are the, the ghosts of our past coming back to haunt us? Are we getting a sequel to our sequel where all these guys come back and break out of jail or something and are they attacking us as a group? Is this one person doing this? Like why is this stuff happening? And a lot of other people, especially the other final girls in the group are like, oh it's just chance. Like this happened out of chance or this one thing that happened was to be expected. And you're trapped in Lynette's head and she's just like, no this can't, that can't be it. Like someone is targeting us. Hey everybody, jumping in here really quick because yet again, I forgot to mention something. Um, if you're familiar at all with Grady Hendrix's work, you know he always goes a little bit extra. My favorite um, book of his as far as design is definitely Horror Store because it's set up like an Ikea catalog. In this book, pay attention to those chapter titles. Um, they're making fun of all of the sequels in slasher films. So you have like 
The Final Girls Support Group 1 is Chapter 1. The Final Girls Support Group 2 is Chapter 2. Then you have the Final Girls Support Group 3D and gold, as usual. So we're following this person who is an unreliable narrator solely because of her mental health and her survivalist nature and her voluntary agoraphobia. Like, she's frightened of everything and goes to these extreme lengths to protect herself. And usually I don't like unreliable narrators. Um, a lot of times I feel like they're written to be complete assholes. Um, a lot of times I think an unreliable narrator can make a story very, very confusing for me and I kind of get lost and I don't really know what's going on and I, I don't love that. But this unreliable narrator I actually really liked. I really felt for her. I felt like I understood her. Um, I connected with some of her mental health experiences. Um, which I can say that for all of the final girls. I'm like, I get where you're coming from. I get why you feel this way. And I, I loved this book. Right now, I'm sitting on a five star. I might bump down to 4.5 because there were some moments that I got a little confused as to what was happening and had to go back and read some pages and read ahead a little bit. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got it. But right now, I'm sitting on five stars. That said, it still ranks kind of with Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, where My Best Friend's Exorcism is my favorite book, but I want to reread these for Halloween. I think it's going to be interesting. This story is definitely, I wouldn't say it's super fast paced. I would say it's like medium to fast paced, but it definitely hits the ground running. I really liked that. I was immediately hooked on it. We already have a, a little hint of news as to what we're getting next summer. So if you haven't listened to it yet, um, Hillary from Melted Books tagged me in a post talking about the Books in the Freezer podcast who was going to do an interview with Grady Hendrix and it was awesome. I listened to the whole hour. It was amazing. They talk about slasher films and their favorites and like Hendrix's favorite books from his paperbacks from Hell collection. And there is this moment where he talks about some books you just dive right in and other ones you just want to hang out with them for a while. And he's got a book scheduled for 2022 that's the kind you just want to hang out with for a while. And I'm like, I am so excited. <laughs> I know you just released a book literally yesterday, but can I have next summer's book now? Because I really want it now. So hopefully this will give you an idea of whether or not you want to read this book. I really, really enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite Hendrix book is and if you want to join me for Hendrix Halloween. Please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye friends.